Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is David. Great to meet you. Now let's get started in today's video. So Here's a really quick Dollar Tree hack. So for this Dollar Tree hack, I actually just found these coasters at my local thrift store for about $4. It comes with five wooden coasters. And then I picked up a pack of Jenga blocks from the Dollar Tree. I also picked up some of this tacky glue and I actually really like this glue. I think it holds very well, but you can use hot glue or E6000 and or both. So basically all I'm doing is gluing the blocks together with the glue. Now this is not an instant hold, so this will need to sit for at least 12 hours. After I get it lined up exactly how I want it, this is actually on the bottom part of the coaster. So what I'm doing is, instead of using them as actual coasters for drinks, I'm going to use these for little plant stands to elevate plants or candles or things like that in my living room. So this is just a simple way to create your own. And Dollar Tree only had the pack of Jenga blocks that had the dark brown color and the tan color. So I just went ahead and used them. You can paint them if you want. But I figured using both would actually look kind of neat. It would be different, I think, to have different shades of the wood. And I did different shapes, as you can tell. In the first one I did four, this one's three. Also only did, stacked too high, just again for that different elevation. Because you never know, I might want a candle to be lower than the plant that I put behind it, or vice versa. So I wanted different heights with my decor that I do put on these. <laughs> Once you are all finished with the glue, I actually just went through and wiped the excess glue off and I let them dry upside down. This is our finished result. I hope you guys like these. I actually love these. They're super cute. And if you guys watched my previous video on my current home tour, I showed you guys uh, this little area here where the placemats were hanging on the wall. So the three on the bottom right hand side are the three that I made and I'm going to show you right now how I made them. For this next project, I grabbed three of these placemats from Dollar Tree. And for me, it didn't matter what color because as you can see here, all we're going to do is paint them. I just painted the front side. As you can see on the back here, I'm not going to paint this. I didn't see why I should paint it since it's going to be hung up on the wall. You won't even see this side. So what I'm doing now is that I'm going to go ahead and cut a piece of twine and then I'm going to hot glue it to the back. So I'm basically just making a little loop. I tried this glue, but this was, again, you guys don't use this glue. Like what I'm doing here, it will not hold right away. This takes hours for this to dry. So this particular glue do not use if you're doing like a hang like this. Just use hot glue. It's not, it's not going to hurt the, uh, the material of this placemat. So I set that one to the side to let that dry. So this blue one here, I actually wanted to create different sizes. So I end up cutting this a bit smaller and I just followed the line all the way around. And it doesn't go like completely like all the way around like in a perfect circle. So you do need to watch your outer edge rather than the inner inside, like inner edge. Or you know what I mean? Not inner edge. You know what I'm saying. So you want to like follow the outer edge with your eye as you cut around. Just to make sure that it does end up in a perfect circle. Or you could place something on top of this and trace over it with a sharpie and cut the, cut the line. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. All right, so now once that is cut to your liking, I actually went ahead and took twine, which I already had on hand, but you can buy this from Dollar Tree or Hobby Lobby, any other craft store that you 
don't mind stopping in and picking up a few other items. So the twine I had was like a dollar or something. I don't even know. Well, anyways, I'm going to use that tacky glue. But again, you can use hot glue. And I think I actually end up switching to hot glue because this glue, like I said, it takes hours for this to dry. So it's not going to stay unless you clamp it. And that's just not, yeah. So here's the hot glue gun. Like I said, I do this so that you guys learn from my mistakes so that way you guys can do it the right way the first time. So now I'm just gluing this on the outer edge just so you don't see that I actually cut the placemat and this will create a clean finished edge. And then here I'm doing the same. I'm just hot gluing a little piece of twine to create like a hoop so that way I'm able to hang it up. Now this is the fun part where I'm just gonna go ahead and paint over the twine and the placemat. This is the front side, obviously. The back side has that little piece of twine glued to it. So I actually just poured different colors of paint. I wanted it darker, so I did like a black mixed with tan and this off yellow color and just kind of bounced my brush in there to kind of get all those little cracks and crevices in that placemat. If you don't do that, you will see the blue through. So you want to fully saturate this uh, placemat. That way you're not able to see that it's actually um, a plasticky or acrylic material. I'm not even sure actually what it is made out of, but you can definitely tell it's not a natural fiber. And yeah, you want to make this look as natural as possible just to go for that boho chic look. And I have also seen these placemats hung on the wall in farmhouse design as well. So if you like farmhouse and you like these placemats, I definitely recommend making a few and you can do them in any color you want but I think they're pretty affordable. This is a dollar. I had the paint on hand. I had the twine and the glue on hand. So I suggest making your own. And if you don't want to make your own and you just enjoy watching this video, please give it a thumbs up for me. That would be awesome. And you could even go to Hobby Lobby and use a 40% off coupon or go when they are on sale, which is what I did. And I got four really beautiful ones for about $20. Or you can actually go thrift shopping like I also did and find them at your local thrift store. They look like little baskets or basket toppers. Super cute. Very inexpensive. You can spend 2 to $4 on each one at the thrift store and create your own decor on your wall. I know this one I wanted it to be a lighter color but the gray just cooled it down and I kind of wanted to warm it up so at, after this dried I then went back over it with a dry brush and just like a very soft white yellow color and I just kind of went over it just to show the dimension with it so you'll see at the very end here. I laid these out on my floor before hanging them on the wall to see how I would like them on the wall. After I liked my layout, I went ahead and hung everything onto the wall and this is the finished result of my whole wall decor piece with the placemats. Can't even tell that I made those three right there in the bottom corner. And here's a closer look just to see that detail that I was talking about earlier. 
And if you watched my previous video, right here is where I'm going to hang the next decor piece we're going to make. All right, for this next DIY, I picked up four of these triangle frames from Dollar Tree. And you're going to need a few other things such as E6000 glue, hot glue, paint of your choice, possibly twine, scissors, an X-Acto knife, possibly a cutting board, and newspaper just to put underneath your project when you do it. You don't want to create a big mess for yourself to clean up later. All right, now let's get started. So you're going to unwrap it and take off the little like tiger head or lion head, whatever that is. Just remove it. You can keep it if you want for done another project, but I discarded mine. I wasn't going to use those. And then we're going to flip it around and take out the little insert here. I just folded these little black things up, the little metal things with my finger, and then I took out the backing here, which all it is is like a very thin piece of cardboard. Once that is removed, then we have just our frame here, and I actually want to sand where the glue was holding that little thing on. And I just sanded this right over my trash can so I don't have to clean up a mess. All right, once we have all of that done, it will now be time to destruct our frames and glue the two together to create the diamond shape one. And if you're not going to create that one and you're going to just do the two triangles, then you can skip that step and start painting. Now I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys that I did mess up. That way you don't follow my mistake. Uh, so I will still show it here in the video what I did wrong, but it actually ended up working out just fine in the end, but if you do it this way anyway. So right now I'm pointing out like where you would specifically cut with an X-Acto knife, but you actually want to cut right about here. And I'm not sure if you could see where that arrow was pointing, but it's basically you're cutting off the whole bottom half of that frame. So you can see here, that it just snapped apart and there was this little metal piece right there and I take it out with pliers. That is not what you want. You actually want to cut that whole piece off. So the bottom piece right here that's loose, that actually the whole thing will be gone plus some right here with the arrow. So basically where those white arrows were pointing, you'll actually cut the top one and not even mess with that bottom one. So that's the mistake that I made. I ended up cutting a piece off of the bottom one that, where that little line was sketched in with the X-Acto knife. And I cut the little chunk off, as you can see here, and then re-glued it to the other, uh, other part of the frame that I'm actually gonna be using. There was really no need to do all that. I just wasted a lot of time. <laughs> Because you know I'm using that tacky glue when I had to dry for like 12 hours and I was just like When I found out when I put the frame back together as the diamond shape and then put the um, the in the The thin piece of cardboard back in it did not fit I'll show you right here So right here. I'm showing you I'm gonna glue these two sides together which in my mind it made total sense you know, it's the diamond shape I want. I'm gonna glue it and tape it after it dried and everything. And I tried to insert the backing back into it. It did not fit. So now it's the next day, I let it dry. And now I moved on to the painting step. I mixed a red with a green to create a mucky brown color instead of just straight black. I painted it and then I took this bronze color and I painted over it just very lightly to create like a wood grain effect with the brush, if that makes sense. And I also went ahead and painted each triangle separately. So I just painted two of them black and I painted two of them white. But I'm about to show you what I'm talking about where it did not fit the diamond shaped frame. So I wanted to like leave this part in the video just so I can show you guys what not to do. That way you kind of you get like a better feel. So in the beginning I had told you guys where to cut it and re-glue it. 
honestly, I'm kind of a little upset because it was a waste of time. So really, I'm gonna show you on one of the triangles right here. But the reason being, like you can obviously see when I put the backings back in, there's this gap in the middle. Now if you like that and you want your wall to show through, that's perfectly fine. And also, you could, if sorry if you were like following through with the video, you can see like where I had cut the piece off and like re-glued it and everything like that in the beginning. Well, here is another triangle piece and when I lay this on top, you can see exactly where we actually need to cut that piece off, which is gonna be right here, going this way. So we cut that off and discard that piece and then all of this and cut this off right here just like that where my finger is so that's like the section you will cut out and then once it's cut out on both both of them you'll have a cut right here and right here and those should be able to just butt up right next to each other which would butt these two next to each other you can see my cat's paw print you guys have been walking on the table I am a little upset just because like I've already painted it. I popped these in and I'm like, really? The cool thing about keeping these back thing is it has this little piece where I'm actually able to still hang the whole thing as a unit. I'm not sure if I'm just gonna go ahead and glue some black stock card and just call it a day or if I'm just gonna leave it open, but I am gonna paint my design on it now. Make sure that this is secured together. I'm gonna flip these around on the back side and then I'm just gonna secure them with some tape that way, when I do paint my design on here, it'll be nice and ready to go. All right, I flipped it around to the other side. I do need to see if I can wipe this paw print off. I really don't want that on there. All right, that paw print is gone. All I did was use some cleaner and clean this off. to safe for acrylic paint, so it's ready to be painted with my design. All right, I'm just using white paint, and I'm gonna use a smaller brush that's kind of flat and a smaller brush that's like longer and fluffier for this design. I'm gonna start off with the short flat brush and we're gonna go ahead and start doing detail work right in the middle. I am gonna show a picture here of my inspiration, kind of what I'm copying, I guess, off of Pinterest. So you can see here I like the eyeball design and the sun design. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the eyeball design. I really liked both of these designs because I thought they kind of incorporated the boho aspect. That's the theme I'm going for in my living room. And here is the finished design. I'm gonna show you what it looks like hung up on the wall inside the frame. And I do wanna point out how I fixed my issue with the gap in the middle. I end up just leaving it taped together and I positioned it into the frame and then I used hot glue and twine around the outer edge in the inside. So now for the next one, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and save me some time and leave the triangles together. I've already painted my triangles, the inserts, uh, white. So these will be two separate pieces that I'm doing. I left this black and I'm gonna just use that same bronze colored paint. And I'm just taking a wider brush and I'm gonna just feather it over the black. I went around all three sides. All right, now that these both are painted very lightly coated, that way you can see some of the black show through and have that stroke to give the wood grain effect. All right, for this design, I'm using this just roll of tape just to kind of get an idea of where the circle is gonna go. Cause I'm creating that sun design. And again, here's that picture of it.
And I do plan on creating another piece for the other like side of it, like to the right of it. So that will be in another video. But I am obsessed with these. I think they turned out so good. And I just think it adds to the feel of the boho look I'm going for.